color analyst for the Edmonton Oilers. Also watch him on Hockey Night in Canada on Saturday nights. Our friend Louis DeBrusque joins us now. Louis, um, how was the mood on the way to San Jose? Did everyone feel that this was inevitable or they were going to give Todd McClellan, you know, the West Coast trip and we'll see what happens after that? And how did he end up going there? Louis, how does he go there to get fired? I'm not sure, guys. I mean, he was on the plane. He came in, and yes, it was a pretty quiet gathering before the plane ride to San Jose. There's no question that this was up in the air. Um, Everybody knew this was coming. This wasn't something, this is right from the start of the season. When they went 0-2, I mean, people were starting to hit the panic button around Edmonton. So, I mean, this wasn't you know, something that just all of a sudden developed. And then they went on a real nice stretch where they went eight, two and one and everything kind of stabilized for a little bit, but then they've lost six of the last seven games. And you know what? After the the loss to Calgary on Saturday, the loss Sunday to Vegas, you could just tell there was a totally different tone and a totally different feel to it. And uh, it happened. You know what? This is something that we've been talking about all year and people have been thinking this was going to happen if the team didn't do well. The team didn't come out of the gates exactly how they wanted to. I thought they had a really strong stretch and a bad stretch. But you know what? This is uh, this is the new National Hockey League. When when things aren't going well, and this this team, after making the playoffs two years ago, didn't make the playoffs last year, there was big expectations coming into this year. And let's face it, they haven't lived up to those expectations for the entirety of this start to this season. And uh, it's been a lot of factors, though. I mean, for me, I I heard what you said, Nick, about. Ken Hitchcock, and I agree with you 100%. I think bringing him in, a guy that has 21 years of experience under his belt, they bring him in, and he's shown in short order that he can solidify and kind of shape up, if you will, a team in short order. He did it in St. Louis when he took over for Davis Payne. I remember that was the first time that I watched him go in there, and, you know, a team that was doing okay. They were kind of right at that 500 number when he took over for Davis Payne, but very early in the season. And you know what? He shaped them up, and they ended up making the playoffs and losing in the second round. Um, this is still, there's still a lot of time left in this season. The Pacific Division hasn't really been taken over by anybody. So I think the organization looked at it as an opportunity as well. There's always going to be a reaction when you fire a head coach. It's just inevitable throughout the lineup, throughout the organization. It, it, it really does. It has an effect. And we all know that. And, and right now they're looking for something to try and take this team over the edge and get to the play the way they did when they went 8-2-1. and one. Um, speaking of lineup changes, uh, do you think there will be any tonight is now Ken Hedgecock is uh, behind the bench in Edmonton. There were some that said, listen, the move to, to reunite Leon Dreisaitl and, uh, and Connor McDavid, uh, I don't want to say it was a desperation move, but it was very much a move to try to, you know, uh, solidify that coach's position to, for, to help Todd McClellan, uh, keep that job and try to turn in some W's. Do we expect them to be split? Louie, do we expect them to be separated or is it too early to even ask? And, you know, here's the thing. It might be a little too early to ask. I'm sure he's going to come in and feel out. But here's the thing. Um, I don't care what coach you're talking about, whether it be Todd McClellan, Ken Hitchcock, or the five coaches before him. You can only displace the personnel on the ice so many different ways. Mm -hmm. So, eventually, you have to come to a point and say, listen, expect more from certain individuals. That's just what it's all about. I mean, I'm sorry. I mean, listen, yes, the head coach's job is to get the best out of the lineup that he has. But let's face it. Maybe they are, guys Louis. They're not pulling their weight right now. Maybe there, they there are. There's guys that are not pulling their weight. And they'll know that. They'll, t- they'll take that responsibility on themselves because they know it. As a player, you 100% know when you're not doing your job and you're not doing what you're supposed to be doing. And they'll feel bad about this, this coaching change. They will. I'm telling you. It, it ne- it never have I ever been on a team where a coach gets fired and you don't feel like, you know what, you're responsible because let's face it. When it comes right down, when you boil it down to the bone, it's the personnel that are on the ice that win and lose hockey games. Yes, the way they're put over the board. Yes, the blind combinations. Yes, the power play system and penalty killing system, the structure. I get all that. But it comes down to the guys on the ice battling for one another and battling for the guy behind the bench. And that just hasn't happened enough this year. It didn't happen enough last year. So this change is necessary because of that, because there was something missing there. So looking at it now, can Ken Hitchcock come in here and somehow get these guys to get motivated and play to the best of their capabilities, well, that's what everybody's hoping they can do. And we'll have to wait and see. But I'm, I guarantee you there will be some changes. He's going to come in and put his stamp on this team. He's going to put his fingerprint on it. He's going to probably feel some guys out, have meetings. He's very familiar with the players in this league. I mean, he's coached for 21 years. 
And he always had high respect for the Oilers when he'd come into town. I mean, the likes of David Dreisel, Nugent Hopkins, Nurse. I mean, they've got they've got some some pieces here that he's probably going to want to shuffle around and put into different places. Um, so have at it, you know, and, and see if he can turn this thing around. Maybe, Louis, they are a lot closer to giving what they're capable of giving than than probably management feels. Then. Isn't it just yeah. inevitable that the finger gets pointed at Peter Shirelli and say, hey, you, your group isn't isn't good enough? And, you know, that's where the accountability has to lie? I agree, 100%. You know, and it's not just on the coach's hands. It's certainly in Peter Shirelli's hands. And I think if if I'm looking at this from my perspective anyway, I would suggest that he's probably on a pretty short leash as well. Things certainly need to go in the right direction for him to maintain his job here in Edmonton. Um, that's the nature of the beast. I'm sorry, this this is the winning league. This isn't the league of going in and trying to play okay. This is the league of going in and winning. So, um, yeah, you know, he, he, he's he's taken some some risks on certain players. He's gone out and he's plugged some different players into the organization to try and find some different chemistry. I do believe there's been a little bit of a change in his philosophy. He's gone back to trying to get faster. You know, with the likes of Tob- Tobias Reeder coming in, he, he drafted a smaller forward, which, you know, for Shirelli, I don't think is was really in his character to do that, and uh, Kyler Yamamoto. So th- there has been a shift. They're, they're shifting. They got caught right in that tectonic shift of the league going from big, strong, ground and pound to super fast and highly skilled. And they did. They got caught with their hand in the cookie jar trying to build a team, the key type of team that he won a Stanley Cup with in Boston. And you know what? Now they're trying to change it over to the the new NHL that is wicked fast, wicked skilled. And it's not as easy to do that as, as you would think. It's not as easy to get rid of contracts that they have necessary, um, get rid of personnel, trade for personnel that other teams don't necessarily want right now because maybe they don't fit into their game plan as well. So listen, I, I hate to preach patience all the time, but sometimes you need to let these things work out because it's just time and it's the logistics of it as far as contracts and salary cap. It's not as easy just to ditch players now and change things over as people think, unless you're willing to give away players for bottom dollar. That's, that's just what it is. It's, and we've seen that already with a couple of trades that Shirelli's made. People don't like them very much because you're, you're not getting the best player back in the trade. So you have to be careful what you wish for because when, when it happens, it doesn't necessarily turn out the way you want it to turn out. So, yes, I think he's on a short leash. I think that this team right now from this point to the end of the season is going to determine whether or not he's the general manager of the Evans Oilers by the end of the year. I do. I mean, there's just no other way to look at it. I mean, it's it's th- this is what this league is all about, and we'll see what happens here with uh, Ken Hitchcock coming in and maybe he can turn this around. But there are some good pieces here. I, I, you know, I want to, through all this smoke, I want to kind of say, you know, like, when you look at this, they have the best player in the game, Connor McDavid, and they're going to build around him. Leon Dreisel is starting to come into his own. Ryan Nugent Hopkins is a formidable forward position. He's a second-line centerman, third at worst, with two good centermen if Dreisel goes back to center. You know, Drake Kajula is starting to play the way they felt Drake Kajula was going to play when he came out of college. So, I mean, they're, 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 you start to look at it. The back end, for me, is the one area that they need to really get solidified. They just haven't been good enough. They haven't been good enough on the offensive side of things, and they certainly haven't been good on the defensive side of things, battling in front of their goaltenders, which leads me to Cam Talbot, who hasn't been the Cam Talbot of two years ago. So, he, you know, last year he struggled to find that consistency and it's carried over into this year. But I do believe that a portion of that has to do with the guys playing right directly in front of them. And the six guys that are in the defense position for the Edmonton Oilers as a whole just have to start buckling down a little bit better. And when they won eight of 11 games, that's exactly how they were playing. Trent Yanni came in. They were battling for sticks. They were paying attention to the slot. They weren't puck watching. They weren't getting running around. They've completely gotten away from that, and they need to get back to that. So, Lou, I'm looking at this shakeup. Uh, I put myself in that locker room as a player, and I would automatically be, whoa, Ken Hitchcock's coming. Okay, uh, time to buckle up here. Um you know, and, and and you talk about philosophy, all the stuff you just listed, but you look down the line of the McDavid's, the Dreisaitl's, Chase on, Kajula, guys scoring goals only for this hockey club. What does this mean for the boys? What does this mean for the players now in style of play, as you mentioned? Def- is it He's coming in to strictly preach defense on this group, you think? I don't think it's strictly defense, but there's no question there's going to be a, a, a more philosophy. structure in that sense. Hitch has always been known for that. But I think that 
you're right. I, I agree with you, Colt. You know what? When I've been through coaching changes, actually, in this exact hotel room was when Kevin, Lowe, uh, sorry, Ron Lowe took over um, for George Burnett with the Edmonton Oilers. He, we, Kelly Buckberg and I bumped into him in the elevator, and he said, "Hey guys, I'm taking over. I was just, I was told today that I'm taking over as head coach." And you know what? I went back to my room that day, and I'm sorry. I don't, I don't care if you're the star on the team or you're the fourth flying grind like myself it affects everybody because now you have to win over a new coach. Now you have to impress a new coach. And now every single time you come to the rink, your, your attention span is dialed in because you're listening to what that new coach is trying to preach. You're trying to get the systems down. That's why you usually do see a spark. You see a little bit of a resurgence from a team when a coach changes over because everybody's dialed in. Sometimes it works. Sometimes it's a, it's a cluster on the ice. It just happens because guys can't seem to get dialed in together or have that cohesiveness but yeah there's there'll be lots of conversations today no question i mean that's that's the nature of the beast changing the head coach is a big change it, mm-hmm. you know people you know we talk about it a lot and it's an important role they get paid great money because it's a tough tough position it's a tough job but i'll tell you what it is a really important job it's a really important job and he's got 25 guys under his helm that he has to take care of he has to try and monitor what they're emotional level is what their mental level is what gets them ticking what makes them work the hardest and that's not an easy thing to do in in today's national hockey league and i think that you know hitch being around for as long as he has like i've said he's come he's coming before in short order and he's been able to shape things up and we'll see if he can do it here with edmonton because i do believe they have some extraordinary pieces here in edmonton they really just need to get coordinated need to get on the same page hey louis just one more before we let you go to uh, I wonder now about the perception now if, you know, and Jeff brought this up earlier, gullets and uh, compared to Hitchcock. And then just, yeah, we know that market could be as vicious as any in the league. How about just Ken Hitchcock, uh, Hitchcock being able to kind of, I don't know, just uh, keep the, keep the water lukewarm. Maybe that's a good way of saying it. A post yeah. and just you know, not like, listen. Can he work it. the media? Can Ken can Ken Hitchcock oh, work can, the media absolutely. better than yeah, anybody? You know Here's the deal. How, how much does that come into play? Well, I think it comes into play a lot. Yeah, I think, I think so I really too. do, Nick. You know what it is? I mean, any Canadian market for that matter, any big hockey market, you have to have a certain savvy when it comes to the media because let's face it, we can be pretty, <laughs> pretty, pretty reckless and pretty uh, aggressive. So. And I include myself in that, too, because I'm part of the media. We, we are. This is what we do for a living, and we're, we're critiquing every little tiny thing that happens out there. So, um, But, yeah, Ken Hitchcock, he's shown in the past this guy can, can hold court. Um, you're not going to push him around. Uh, very smart individual. You know, he's a guy that uh, really thinks the game at a high, high level. I mean, there's no question. I, I do like listening to his, to his talk sometimes because they'll always bring up something you, you listen to. You're and go, always, wow, you know, as Doug McLean says, at it. So. You're always learning something new. <laughs> hey, Louie. Absolutely. You're you are, always you know learning what? something he new. Can handle the pressure. He can handle the pressures of being in a, in a Canadian market, no question. That was a big factor in the decision. Yeah. All right, the Hitchcock era begins tonight in Edmonton, while four of the Oilers in San Jose facing off against the Sharks. Louie, always a pleasure. Thanks for the uh, very thorough analysis. Much appreciated. Thanks, guys. 